Hi everyone, it's Shanti for the Rough Cuts on Sunday. I just got finished with But Numathon 12, the dirty, the dirty dozenth. I am kind of out of it. As some of you know, it's a 24-hour film festival, but this was a bit longer than 24 hours because we took a field trip over to the IMAX and so it took a long time. Anyway, so yeah, so here's the badge for Butnomathon. It was awesome. It was so incredibly awesome, the films that were shown here. Some of them I can't talk about. Like, I can say what they are, but I can't talk about the film because some of them were actual rough cuts that we saw. But I'll go through the list and a brief synopsis of what I've thought of them, and then I'll go into further depth later on, either here or my other channel. First one that we saw, True Grit. This was awesome. It's a remake, you know, the original, and this was actually a good remake. It wasn't just a remake for the sake of remaking it. There was a lot more comedy in this. It had Jeff Bridges, also Matt Damon was in it. And it was really, really enjoyable. So when True Grit comes out, I highly recommend this film. Go see it. The second one was Le Samurai with Alain Delon. It's very French. This is a very French film. A lot of people hated it. They were just like, what was that? Why do they not know how to edit in France? I thought it was enjoyable and Alain Delon is gorgeous. So yeah, if you like looking at him, you'll enjoy this film. But otherwise, like, it's a guy who, I, I'm not even sure what it was about. Like, he's a hitman, and he gets hired by this group of people to, like, bump off a boss, but he doesn't know exactly who it is that's, you know, in charge of the whole thing. And then, yeah, it's, it's like a big, like, messy circle. Anyway, I learned alone, the samurai. Like 60s French film, I think. I have no idea what year any of these things are. My, my brain's fried. Then we saw On the Town, which I love. It's one of my favorite films. Gosh, it, Gene Kelly, Frank Sinatra, Ann Miller, Vera Ellen, Jules Munchen, Betty Garrett. Directed by Stanley Donnan. It's from... What year is this from? Was it 1939? No. No, I think it came out in the 40s. I don't remember. It's awesome. This is an awesome film. If you haven't seen it, you definitely should. Definite audience favorite, and I've seen this like no fewer than 20 times. And like seeing it in the theater was just amazing. It was a gorgeous print on the town. Go check it out if you really like musicals. You know, you have three sailors, you know, they have 24 hour leave, they go and find a girl, three girls. Okay, then we saw um, Cowboys and Aliens. This was introduced by John Favreau and Ron Howard who were just really cool. They gave us all autographed posters of Cowboys and Aliens. When this film comes out, you have to go watch it. It was just the rough cut that we saw. It comes out in, I think, eight months. So it was just the rough cut and only, like, two reels of it. So it was, like, 40 minutes. But it was so cool. It, it'll just it'll blow your mind. It's, it's amazing. It's amazing. It's Daniel Craig in it and Harrison Ford. Daniel Craig... He's so cool. He's just really, really cool. We can't really talk about it. So I'm sure you can find a synopsis online, but we can't talk about it. Anyway, um, then we saw um, Rango, sort of Rango, um, voiced by Johnny Depp as Gore Verbinski's Rango. It was really cute. It seemed really, really cute. And so, like, someone was just like, it's like Fear and Loathing in Las Vegas, but for kids. But yeah, yeah, it was, it was cute. I look forward to when Rango comes out. Then we watch uh, Santa Fe Trail, Olivia de Havilland, Errol Flynn, and Raymond Massey's in it, Ronald Reagan, back when he was still Ronald Reagan. It's really enjoyable. If you haven't seen this film, this was from 1939. Yes, Santa Fe Trail was from 1939. That's the one. I'm so out of it right now. Okay, and also I'm recording this straight up here. So... Not that I really edit anyway, but it's just like a one-time thing. So sorry if I ramble, because I haven't slept in a day and a half. And I've been sitting in the dark, just watching solid films. Santa Fe Trail, anyway, it's, it's good. 
Next that we saw was The Fighter. This has a crackhead, Christian Bale, and Mark Wahlberg. Awesome, awesome, awesome. This was such a good film. The script was really good, based on a true story of um, Mickey Ward and Dick Eklund. And Christian Bale is... Like, his character, Dicky is like a crackhead brother to Mark Wahlberg's character, of Mickey Ward. And so basically, so he's a weatherweight fighter. Dick Eklund was a boxer who knocked out Sugar Ray Leonard, and that was like his claim to fame. And so then he just got into this downward spiral of like drugs, and he was training his younger brother to become a fighter. And so it's just like a lot of drama, a lot of angst, but very well done, very well acted. Amy Adams is also in it. So yeah, go give that a look when it comes out. Then we saw Hunchback of Notre Dame, which I think was also 1939. Because remember, 1939 was like the best like film ever, or the best year ever for films. And so it was Charles Law and Marina Harrow, um, Edwin O'Brien, and you know Quasimodo, Esmeralda. That story, you should know the story. If you haven't seen this, you should definitely go check it out. It's an amazing film. Per Questmore, who did the makeup, amazing. Um, Chimes of Midnight. Also, Falstaff, Chimes of Midnight. This was supposedly Orson Welles' favorite film. I think many of us kind of hoped Orson Welles would rise from the grave just so we can put him back in there for being in this film. I I think probably if they didn't show it at like 3 a.m., we would have really been into it. But like none of us knew what was going on afterwards we're just like well, what do we just watch because it was like this like the home stretch we were all so tired and then you throw Shakespeare at us and we're just like what what are they talking about I think it was Henry V and like Percy and I, 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 just, I don't know I don't know but anyway it's not available on DVD and they were able to track down the 35 millimeter prints of that so, I think at some point in time, I'm going to try to watch it again. If it ever comes on cable, it'll probably come on Turner Classic Movies at some point in time. They always do. But anyway, that was just, yeah, that was, that was hard. That was rough. That was rough to watch. So if you get a chance, Fall Staff Chimes at Midnight, you may like it, you may not. If you're tired, yeah, don't watch it. Don't watch it if you're tired. Then we saw Richard Pryor's stand-up comedy from 1979. Always entertaining. Except you can, yeah, he, no one would be able to, like, do that today. At least, at least not that openly. Not that openly. They still do, if not that openly. Then we saw Green Hornet. Green Hornet was awesome. I really enjoyed it. Although, there was a little too much of Seth Rogen being Seth Rogen in it, if you understand what I mean. But highly enjoyable. It, it was a lot of fun, a lot of action. John Cho, the guy, I think his name is John Cho. I'm pretty sure it's John Cho. I, I haven't looked up like any of these things yet, but he did a really good job playing Kato. I really enjoyed him. And, um, gosh, what is her name? I can't think of her name right now. Cameron Diaz. Cameron Diaz was really enjoyable in it as well. Drive Angry was... The next one on the docket, Nicolas Cage, and I wrote, gosh, this guy who's in, like, everything, I can't think of his name right now, my brain is so fried. Anyway, this movie was crazy. Was, you got Nicolas Cage being Nicolas Cage. Once again, we can't really talk about this, so I think you can look up synopsis online, but we can just say if, if we liked it or not. So, I liked this. I think everyone liked this crazy crazy film not 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 the best Nicolas Cage but yeah it was up there it was up there and then the final film of the night Tron Legacy literally like my eye well I guess not literally because they weren't on fire but my eyes were burning by this point in time great 3D in Tron Legacy it was great 3D the plot line 
you know, it wasn't bad. It wasn't bad, but a lot of action. It kept me a lot more engrossed than the original Tron, which I tried to watch again a few years ago, and we were just like, oh my gosh, why do we love this so much? But this, this it was good. It was enjoyable. A lot of action, fast moving. Yeah, so it could, like, I have to tell any of you to go check out Tron. When I'm more coherent, I'll go more into depth about Tron Legacy. And maybe when I can remember more of it. Because this, this was the last film that we saw. So this was like the 23rd hour of Buttonamathon. Because it's supposed to be 24, but it was longer than 24. And yeah, so it was, yeah. But it, it was good. It was really, really good. All of us loved it. 3D in it is awesome. It really is. And you've got Jeff Bridges in it. He's, yeah, it's just, just an enjoyable film. An enjoyable film. So I, I'm sorry. I'm like so incoherent right now. But I want to get this up. And I'm not even quite sure what I said at this point in time. But I will see you all next week. And I'll go more in depth on my other channel and these. And then talk about some of these along the line. Anyway, see you all next time. Bye-bye. Have a good weekend.